Hey, everyone, welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Marilyn Shannon, and this is The Breaking Free Show, The Breaking Free Show. I'm so happy to have all of you here today. Thank you for joining us. And as always, I am honored that you're here and that you've chosen this time to spend with us. And I'm going to give you all that I got every single week. I'm going to give you all that I got. And I'm just, I'm honored that you're here. And I know you could spend it in a lot of other places. So thank you for being here. Tell me say hi to Amnon. Hello, Marilyn. Hi, How um, are you? I'm good. Amnon is our producer. Your hair looks great. I like the haircut. I, you know what? I'm trying to, to, to schedule my appointment now so that it's exactly on time. And sometimes I miss it. But <laughs> it's, I think my, my time is like five weeks. I go a few days over five weeks. And honey... Let me tell you what, I ain't fit for no camera. <laughs> but anyway, I do it anyway, because what the heck? You don't care about my hair now, do you? You only care about what my my guests are saying, what I'm saying, what we're all thinking and feeling. That's all that matters, right? My hair don't really matter. So anyway, I'm really happy you're here. Remember that you are welcome to join our chat. You can put your name underneath our video and come in there and ask questions, whatever you like. You can call in anytime you want at 919-518-9773, or you can come in, comment on Skype at computers. That's plural, the number 2K voice. And, you know, we really want you to do it. I know a lot of times you all listen and you, you watch, but we would love you to call in anytime. This is an opportunity. I know, you know, most of us are not accustomed to doing that on TV. But this is different TV. This is our TV. This is our channel. This is a way for us to communicate and create the kind of world that we all want to live in, that we see for ourselves and our families. So feel free to comment, you know, call in, give us your experiences, you know, anytime you want. You don't have to, but you are more than welcome to. So let's get on and, with our... Yes, and yes. those who are watching us on... Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need to come to nissancommunications.com and get to the watch live for the chat. Yes. So if you're on Facebook and you're watching us, then you are welcome to go to nissancommunications.com and you can watch us there also, but you can participate in the chat. So if you're on Facebook and you want to say something and you want to do it in the chat, come to our website, but you can call in as well. All right, here we go. So we are delighted to welcome back our guest, Dr. Alyssa Metis. She's been on before, and she has been um, it, she has a very interesting story. And we're going to talk about her story, but we're going to take it into some different directions. So, Alyssa, welcome back. Hey, glad to be back. And by the way, about the hair thing, I'm in the same situation. It's got to be five weeks, or all of a sudden the next day it's a critical mass, and I look like Donald King. Yeah, I mean awful. seriously, it just all yeah, of a sudden. Happened to me, it, it happened to me recently, and at 12 midnight, I looked at my hair and said, "No," and I got a pair of scissors, and, just... and so now this one little area has a little hole in it. But uh, okay. sometimes I'm tempted. But it's, it's funny because it's perfect. And all of a sudden you wake up one morning and you're like, I know. oh, my God, how did it get so unperfect? Go figure. <laughs> but you know what? You go with it. And I have to say, can I just have to tell you this. One year, I um, I think I, I, I hit my face or something in the middle of the night and woke up and my tooth, remember that? My tooth in the front popped out, broke off, whatever it did. And I, what I could not, it was Monday. I mean, I couldn't get a dentist appointment before the show. So I came in and I'm not with, and I were kind of talking and I said, you're not going to believe this. He said, what? And I opened my mouth and I had a hole. I had no tooth. And oh my God, do you remember that? And I love to laugh. So I'm not made a point of not doing a close up on me. So things do happen when you do these live shows. You never know. I know that always happens to me on Friday, so I have to wait till Monday. I mean, I, that same things happened to me, and you know, I, I had to go to uh, the the clinic, see patients looking like Howdy Doody, but I just uh, so I got in a fight in uh, in a bar, or I tell them I was an alligator wrestling <laughs> accident, so they're good I with hear that. You. But you know and what? Sadly, they probably believe it. Yeah, really, and things happen, but you know what? Our messages are more important. So let's get yeah. Alyssa to tell us. 
who she is, and we'll go from there. So tell us, tell everybody who they are, who you are. Well, I think first and foremost, I'm a mom, five kids, age 22 uh, to 33, I guess. Um, I'm also a physician, been a physician for almost 30 years, maybe a little over 30 years, and uh, an author of, of several books. Uh, my life took a huge turn when I lost Eric, my forever 20 year old child who took his gun. And um, it was really hard because I was raised by atheists. I mean, I'm talking militant atheists. So uh, I, I wasn't an atheist, but I, I really did not have much of a, uh, of a belief system about what happens after you die. And also being a physician, you know, we are raised in material science. So uh, for us, most of us anyway, uh, in order for something to be real, it has to be perceived with one of our senses or measured with an instrument. And I couldn't do that. So after he died, it's like, now what? Where is he? Is he still, is he still anywhere? And so that's when I started reading so many books about near-death experiences, quantum physics, um, uh, controlled study, studies using mediums, uh, all sorts of books about consciousness survival and so on. And I guess I finally just ran out of books I could read and understand. And so I decided to go ahead and uh, try to try out a medium. Okay, you're looking at a person who right before that, if you told me medium, it would have conjured up this image of a, of a gypsy hunched over a crystal ball. That's what I thought about things like that. I was quite the skeptic. But, you know, I knew a lot of parents did seek the help of a medium uh, out of desperation, partly. So I did too. And it was an amazing experience. I've had a lot of really bad readings with mediums since then and some very good ones. But this lady, Jamie Butler, she only knew my name and credit card number pretty much. And she was, she said, Elisa, your son Eric is here. He says he took his life. Uh, he did it with a gun. This is the kind of gun he used. This is where we were sitting. This is the exact description of his clothing. And she also included his personality, which is really rascally, a lot of sailor talk, which made her wince. Every F-bomb made her wince. And um, so I, I decided to keep trying, you know, and, and uh, having session after session. At first, all the sessions were like personal things like why or what could we have done and did we do anything wrong to cause this? But eventually I started asking him about what death is like, what the afterlife is like, what it's like to be a spirit. Do your emotions change? Do your senses change? And um, at the same time I started to blog, actually my daughter, my eldest daughter made it for me, channeling Eric, where, well, I, I guess I just wanted to provide a place for other people who grieve um, in a safe and loving, supported way. Uh, listen, let me interrupt you just a second. I, before you go on, I have some questions that I want to interrupt you. So that yeah, because I might not stop, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I may not up. let you stop, but now, <laughs> but I have to, I want to make sure that we cover some things. So okay. first of all, for those of you out there that have lost someone or, you know, close to you or you haven't, some of what we're going to talk about will certainly... Um, appeal to everyone. But one of the things that I wanted to mention is when you have lost someone, as Alyssa had lost her son, sometimes regardless of what your beliefs are or were, you're desperate to do something. You know, you're like screaming on the inside, on the outside to do something that, you know, because you're desperate. You want, you just, you want to be with that person. And I think some of what I heard you say came from maybe that feeling yeah. of desperation because that kind of outweighed you know the, the your the way you were brought up or this you know having that scientific brain right that's true but one real turning point was three it happened three days after eric died uh i got this call from my again militantly atheist father and uh he said lisa in a panicky voice by the way I was sitting in my chair reading the paper and, and I look up and there's Eric standing right in front of me, just as clear as day. And then he turned into his little boy self and crawled up to my lap. I'm so startled. I don't know what to believe. Now, this is not the kind of guy, sorry, dad, 
that would say this to comfort me or give hope. He was not, he was a, mentally ill and, and not very nice. And his first words to me when Eric died was, sorry, Lisa, but Eric's going to turn to dust. That was it. Uh, sorry, so Lisa, for, what? What did you say, Miss that? Uh, sorry, Elisa, but Eric is going to turn to dust. That was his first words to me. And, uh, you know, so for him to say that, I thought, well, gosh, you know, he's not going to make this up. So, and he didn't really have any relationship to speak of with, with Eric or any of his other grandkids. Uh, so that got me thinking, what's going on? And also at the same time, we started having weird things happen around the house. Like faucets would turn on all the way, not just a trickle. Deadlights would turn while we watched. Um, uh, unplugged appliances would uh, uh, turn on. For example, um, this one Viking downdraft vent, it, it's the thing that comes out next to your stove, sucks up all the smoke from my burned up cooking. It would just do that every time my husband came from the garage into the kitchen. It would go up and down. It's like Eric was saying, hi. Here's the thing is, though, that, that we were remodeling the kitchen at the time, so there was absolutely no power at all. So imagine the Viking appliance expert, what they thought. Right. And how long ago did Eric die? Eight years. Eight years ago. And you started on this kind of quest how soon after he passed away? I would say when, when I got that call from my father, to tell okay. you the truth. Okay. Isn't Things really unfolded up then. Yeah. It, it's so weird that an atheist put me on this path. What does that tell you? Expect the unexpected, I guess. I Anything's guess. possible. I guess. And some things are, are beyond our control, beyond our, our imagination. True. Right? And yes. beyond what we think we know. Mm. Right? Yeah. So Chris has a question here um, on the chat. How did you, how did your new understanding about what happened after death affect your relationships with your patients? Well, you know, I retired relatively shortly afterwards, but it did change my relationship with my colleagues who I still have contact with. Um, I'm sort of afraid to share with them what had happened, but inevitably it'd come up. I would be at a Christmas party and they'd say, well, what are you doing now? It's like, well, I'm writing a blog and writing book. Oh, what's it about? No, oh God, no, I really don't want to go into this. Oh, but on this can of worms. Cause you know, it's, it's scary. You don't know what people are going to say. You're talking to the devil, things like that. And, um, but inevitably, I mean, almost a hundred percent of the time when I share my story, they will open up and say, oh, my gosh, I got a visit from my mother-in-law right after she died. Or this one lady said, you wouldn't believe this, but I, I uh, saw two angels standing by my dumpster last night. Just the weirdest things. So I think a lot of people are in the closet about spirituality and their beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I because uh, when you don't know something to be true, you, sometimes people are hesitant to express themselves when they don't know. You know, right. You, right. You have you you have to kind of be comfortable in the unknown. You know? Well, and, you know, it also took me a long time to truly believe, really. I, I, I kind of floated around 94 percent, 90 percent belief um, in spite of all the paranormal things that were happening, like um, uh, seeing him hop on the foot of my bed from one foot to the other when I was not even asleep. I mean, I just. Didn't even have time to put my head down on the pillow. And there was Eric, jumping from one side to the other, back and forth. And my deceased sister, Denise, was sitting on the left foot of the bed. And I, I thought it was so surreal. And then he turns to me, looks me in the face, and you see this look of shock in his expression. And he says, Mom, you can see me. So he runs into my arms and we hug. He really felt solid. I tell you the truth, just completely solid. And then he slowly disappeared, unfortunately. And then we had a, a call from him on the telephone one time too. But in spite of all that, time would pass, doubt would creep in. And um, I think it was because I was really afraid to totally believe. Because what, what if then I found out all of a sudden that it was all nonsense? Okay, that, that would be like losing him all over again, but forever. So it took probably four and a half years 
for, for and one event happened uh, to, to put me to 100% and never to go back again. And that was hearing his voice in one of the recorded sessions. A, a blog member contacted me and said, at least I heard another voice, actually three other voices. Uh, on the session you did four and a half years ago. I said, what? No, that was just Tammy and me. That's it. But of course I listened and sure enough, there was my son. I mean, a, a mom recognizes the sound of their own kid's voice. It was Eric without a doubt. The way he said breakfast, he would say it like a child breakfast. Mm -hmm. So uh, tick clearing his throat. I can hear him pacing, which he did all the time. So there we go. And, oh, one more thing. I uh, took it to a, actually two sound professionals and their conclusion was that it was not a human voice. It, le it left no voice print for one thing. Hmm. So what is your, so what work are you doing now since you retired? What's your, what's your work now? Uh, well, I've got a radio show, The Hour of Enlightenment, where Eric will, will, will talk a little bit through a medium for like 20 minutes on whatever, how to let go or uh, different topics. Um, and then I have a YouTube channel, the Channeling Eric YouTube channel and, and the blog and, um, and grandkids that keep me really busy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Channeling Eric events. Uh, we had one in Belgium here recently. We've had them in the UK. We've had them all over the country. Um, and, um, that's about it. What's your overall mess? I mean, let's get into your message. What's your message? Well, I guess the message is something I learned. The most important message over these years, um, is that just because you lose someone doesn't mean you've really lost them. I mean, really they've only lost their body and they happen to live in a parallel dimension. It's right on top of ours. So you don't have to stop having a, uh, a relationship with them. You can continue to have them, and, and they want you to. They really do. All these people say, leave them alone, let your child rest in peace, but th that's not the case. Just because you, we can't see them does not mean they don't exist. Look at this, radio waves, right? We can't see them, but we know they exist. Mm -hmm. You can't see love, but we know that exists. Mm -hmm. And that's because everything is energy. I mean, everything. This coffee cup, and I will have a sip because I'm really thirsty, matter. Einstein referred to it as frozen light. Thoughts and emotions are energy. And all that energy vibrates at its own, everything vibrates at its own very unique frequency on this long electromagnetic spectrum. X-rays, UV rays, infrared rays, and so on. So we exist in the visible range. It's a real tiny sliver in the electromagnetic spectrum. And, and that's our 3D world. That's where we can see things. That's where matter is and so on. Uh, everything above and below that is invisible. It's like a hummingbird, okay? When they flap their wings really, really fast, you can almost not see them. Sometimes you can't. But when it's resting quietly on a branch, you can. That's because it's a difference in the frequency of those wings beating or not beating, as the case may be. So you've learned all of this. You've 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 acquired this knowledge through um, the last whatever eight years, pretty much that Eric has been dead and what you've been able to understand about death. That's right. A lot of it I've learned from Eric, some from books, but a lot of it from Eric himself. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, you know, a lot of people grieve so much the loss of their loved one and they don't understand why other people are getting signs or visits and they're not. Well, there's actually a scientific explanation for, for that. And that's um, when we are really grieving and we're deep in depression, our own vibrational frequency goes way toward the bottom of the visible range. And here our loved ones are outside and above the visible range. Uh, you know, their uh, frequency is much higher. Well, in order to reach us, they have to lower their vibrational frequency so much more. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say things like, I feel depressed, I feel down, I feel low. It's our vibrational frequency we're referring to. We feel heavier too, you know. But uh, when we're elated, oh, I'm just high as a kite, you know, things like that. That that means that our vibrational frequency is higher. And so when people ask this question of me and say, why can't I see them? 
what can I do? I tell them, uh, you know, watch your favorite stand-up comic. You know, do uh, try to remember some joyful uh, experiences with your loved one. <laughs> try to raise your own vibrational frequency. Yeah, that you know, it's interesting because I recently well, moved, um, which I've mentioned on the show before, to be closer to my children and my grandchildren, and I know my vibration is is higher, and I'm well, totally aware that when my vibration is higher, I am more tuned in and I'm more able to see things. That's true. Right? That is so true. That's so true. Yeah. Yep. And experience things. So what yeah. you're saying makes perfect sense that we would, our vibration would, a higher vibration is going to match a higher vibration. Yes. Right? That's true. So, Absolutely. so, Tell so oh mm, mm. so I can think my mouth and my, so I'm traveling at such a high vibration my mouth has to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain is just too fast. So I don't know if I can do it because I'm like my. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyway, I want to encourage everyone. Oh, you have to be traveling at a vibration when you're listening to this. Come on, nine one nine five one eight nine seven seven three or computers two K voice. Our chat is open. Join us, and I'm sure that there are some of you, many of you out there that are skeptics, no question. We're all skeptics too, in some way, because, you know, you know, as much as I can believe it, then there's always that piece of me that maybe can't, that needs some more proof. And then I have my proof and then I'm good for a little while. And then of course I slip again and I need more proof and I have to go deeper. I have to listen more. I have to connect more dots to be, and the thing is, I, Alyssa, tell me if I'm, if this is ha what you think. It keeps us in our, it keeps us somewhat grounded in this life to, to, to somehow, I don't know, be reminded or experience the being reminded because we have to, we're living here. And if we're, if we're traveling at such a high vibration, it can tend to maybe enter into an ego as opposed to grounded. So tell me what you think. Um, I agree. I, you, you can't have your entire head in the afterlife and spirituality. Otherwise you're going to rob yourself of the human experience, which is all about polarity, about contrast, uh, about sometimes, uh, experiencing negative things in order to um, to remember that we are love. That's what Eric says. We are here to remember that we are that energy called love. Everything is love. Everything is energy. Everything is light. Uh, but yeah, I totally agree. You know, about being the skeptic, it's okay, I think, to be an open-minded skeptic. It's mm -hmm. the closed-minded skeptics that I do have a problem with. Um, this guy, a theoretical uh, physicist, I don't know if you know him, Dr. Thomas Campbell. Yeah. He wrote My Big Toe, T-O-E, Theory of Everything. He had this remarkable analogy that I just love. We are kind of like our intestinal bacteria. So for all we know, bread that comes down to us is manna from heaven. We don't know that the seeds have to be sowed, that crops have to be rotated. We don't know anything about the the, uh, ec the global economics of, of wheat or that needs to be transported to the mill and made into bread and blah, blah, blah. But it does exist. Mm -hmm. You know, there's <clears throat> wheat and bread out there. Exactly. Another thing I like is, is a quote by Arthur Schopenhauer. Um, he said that truth goes through three phases. First, it is ridiculed, and I've been through a lot of that. Then it's scorned, but eventually it's accepted as self-evident. And that's what happened, for example, when everybody thought the world was flat, right? right? And then one guy stands up and says, nah, I think it's round. So he got ridiculed. I think he got thrown into prison. Who was that? Was it Galileo? I don't know. I forgot. Who My high school days. The world was round and not flat. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, flat Copernicus. Copernicus, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> There will be a pop quiz after this show, people. <laughs> yeah, don't forget, everybody. Yeah. So remember, Facebookers, you are welcome to join us on our chat. Just come to NissanCommunications.com, and you will be able to um, put your name in the, you know, near the video and uh, comment if you like. So, 
Um, Chris has a question now, too, that I want to ask you, uh, again, on the chat. So since this profound shift with this understanding that you have, when somebody does die, do you experience sadness? Wow, that is such a good question. I don't really feel profound sadness except for they're feeling the grief. And, you know, they're missing the physical. I mean, I miss the physical. I mean, I'm sad about that, that I can't hug Eric anymore, give him a kiss or ground him. I, you know, I can't do all those things anymore. So there's sadness on a certain level, but not the profound sadness like when I didn't believe any of it. Plus, I'm not afraid to die anymore, especially after reading. And it's so healing for me. Eric's book, totally channeled through Jamie Butler, the medium. My Life After Death and Memoir from, from Heaven, because it describes everything that he experienced in his own words from moments before his death until the present. I mean in such detail exactly what the afterlife is like, what God is like, what the sky there is like, what their senses are like, what their emotions are like, what they do on a regular basis, and, and so on. Um, but that really helps heal me because I, I know what's in store for me and others, and I know that my boy's okay. So now that you opened up that part, I want to ask you another question. Then I want to get more into some of the scientific stuff and how you're connecting that with spirituality. And maybe we're already talking about it, actually. So when somebody dies, are the souls at different levels in death? Are what do you there, mean? Are, in other words, are there certain... Yeah, once a, once a, a human, a body or dies are the let's say was is eric more evolved as a dead soul than other dead souls oh no i don't think okay. so i mean he's he has a big huge energy and i think because he gets so much love from the blog members that it's really fed his energy so apparently from what i understand from the mediums he's super easy to channel and he can split himself off like any soul infinitely uh, to, to help people, to prank people, to visit people, and, and so on. So, uh, but no, you know, I mean, he, he can cross over, but he can also come back to the earthly plane and haunt us. What For do example, you mean, I remember you said pardon? split off. Yeah, like he, can into, be, yeah he can be mini Eric's with complete full consciousness mm -hmm. um, anywhere in the world. A any spirit can do this. So that makes that makes yeah. really good sense. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a great way to put it, too, because yeah. you can so, split uh, off. OK, but what's interesting is at the point of death. Well, first of all, you have to know that um, the soul is, Eric says, tethered. I read that actually afterwards in some scientific journal that the soul itself is tethered, tethered to the inside of these little hollow tubules called microtubules. Now, those are tiny tubes, uh, microscopic tubes in all, almost all cells, not red blood cells, that help maintain the integrity of the cell but are also involved in cell division. All right, so you have the energy of the soul. Uh, connected to the energy of the inside space of the microtubules. And at the point of death, the energy builds up and builds up. It's almost like a friction develops and a little micro spark boop, spark, uh, happens. And then the soul detaches from that hollow space. That is, in, in terms of physics, what happens during death. Now, some people have trouble disconnecting from their body and so the friction builds up too much and it just builds and builds and all of a sudden boosh you have spontaneous human combustion and that is why there are incidences of that and interestingly enough it very often has it happens uh to people who have trouble letting go in general for example hoarders oh wow Okay, I need you to explain the tube again, but you know a book I just started reading today? What's that? The Untethered Soul by oh, Michael really? Singer. Have you ever read that? No, I probably have. Well, I'm that's what I books. started reading today out of the blue. Go figure. Interesting. So tell, s describe the tube again. All right, so uh, every cell has these little hollow tubes in them 
called microtubules, and they're hollow. And so the, the soul, which, by the way, is made of neutrinos, okay? So says Eric. Uh, and just to back, just to back explain, um, neutrinos are particles that are so small that they, that, that they found it out because they could go through lead. They were shooting a particle shooter. I don't know what it was called. And uh, it, they had a special screen to pick up any kind of particles uh, that would pass through the lead. And the only ones that were were neutrinos. And that explains how spirits can go walk through walls and things like that. And so anyway, those little neutrinos, um, which are carriers of information, by the way, uh, connect to the energy inside the microtubules in every single cell. That's how in life we are connected to our body, to every single cell, to every single microtubule within those cells. Wow. So you got this information from Eric? Mm -hmm. Read from Eric, not reading it. No. Is that information I, out here? I mean, because I've never heard I, of it. But. I don't know about the neutrinos. I could probably do a search and see, but I, I, I read a, a few years later about the microtubule theorem. So he has proven a lot of things, you know, that, uh, that come out, come out later, basically. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I can't, I, I, can't even, I can't even ask a question because I don't know, understand it enough. Which I'm well, just going to yeah. have to listen and just take it in and maybe I'll have to ask you another time because I, it's so much, it seems so scientific in my, to, for me to grab hold of it that I, I'm, I can't. Well, it's hard for me too, Marilyn. I've had to digest it for a while too. For example, um, Eric uh, talks about how, you know, thought creates reality. That's the right. law of attraction, Right. So if you think I want money, the universe, so to speak, is going to interpret it literally and put you in a spot where you're always wanting money and never right. getting it. Right. So you have to have the thought that you're, you know, and, and imagine that you already have the money. You already have abundance because there's no such thing as scarcity. That's a complete illusion. So how does that happen? Um, consciousness uh, does something called collapsing the Schrodinger wave equation so that a wave, like a light wave, will turn into a particle, a photon. Particles are the building blocks of reality, not waves, but particles. So just by, by focusing your consciousness on a something can change waves into reality, into particles. Let me ask. So... It's so interesting. You know, so, um, in a couple of weeks, I think, we're going to have Eben Alexander on the show. Do you know who he is? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. He wrote Here's the book. Um, proof oh, of Heaven. Yeah, Proof right? of Heaven. Yeah. Exactly. So he was this real conservative surgeon, I believe, and, you know, would never believe anything like, you know, in kind of atheist, this kind of sort of in a way, and or anything in the supernatural. And then... Um, he contracts meningitis, gets, you know, he's like near, like he's not just near death. He is almost like practically dead. And he sees things in heaven that he would never understand or know about. And he's able to come, wake up, come back and be able to explain it and explore it. And in some regard, the fact that he was such a conservative surgeon gives it more credibility. Do you feel that that Eric's death and cause of death would have something in Eric's position and being able to communicate with you through you or through the medium. Do you feel that there's the purpose, there is a purpose behind that and in regards to the fact that you were a scientist, atheist and all, you know, not atheist, but brought up in an atheist home have any bearing on any of the story? Well, you know, it really helps me relate to people who struggle like me in their journey from skepticism to belief. Uh, I, I think people find me more credible because I didn't believe before, right? And and I need science behind it, and a lot of people do also. Um, so 
they feel a kinship sometimes with me, having gone through the same battle that they're going through too. But it, it was really, according to Eric, this was supposed to happen, unfortunately, the way it did. He, you know, we, when we're on the other side, we create these spiritual contracts for ourselves uh, in order to um, evolve when we incarnate. And his spiritual contract was to come to Earth, suffer with learning disabilities, Tourette's, mental illness, and so on, so that he could develop the skills he needed to be, become a better spirit guide, uh, the listening sp skills, the empathy, the compassion, and so on. And uh, by the way, he says that spirit guides are actually really common. They're like taxi cabs in New York, he says. I thought that was funny. Yeah, so things, so it, so all of this is is meant to happen. All of this is meant to happen. Yes, unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately. Unfortunately, fortunately. Fortunately, unfortunately. Unfortunately, because, you know, if I, I, I this is going to really come off as so selfish of me, okay? Sorry. Don't send your hate mail to poor Marilyn. But, I, you know, if I had the choice of having him here but completely happy and not helping so many people as he had, I'd choose that. I really would, you know? Just to you choose what? Which your mom? You I, I would choose having him here and happy. Okay. Even okay. if and I knew, and it's really amazing because we've gotten so many comments from people who say that Eric has saved them figuratively, and sometimes actually literally. Like I had a comment um, uh, from somebody that says, "I was going to kill myself today, but after reading this blog post, I'm I want to live." And that was several years ago, and the guy's still around. And there, there was this other mom who uh, lost her son, much in the same way I lost Eric, and she had been going to therapy for quite some time. Didn't work in her case. Usually therapy is very helpful, though. So after her last session, she decided to kill herself. So she was getting everything ready. And I can't remember how she was going, going to do it, uh, that escape stream. But um, for some reason, before she did whatever she was going to do, she felt this compulsion to go to her computer and type in, my son is dead. And up comes Channeling Eric, the blog. So she reads it from the very beginning to the end and decides that life is worth living. And she's an extremely active blog, blog member to this day. So that's kind of rewarding. And, um, and that gives me a, a, an immense responsibility to continue this, though. It really does. I mean... What if I stop it? I mean, how, who's going to suffer because of that, you know? Do you sometimes um, want to stop it? Well, sometimes if I read nasty comments, I mean, some really like, do you kiss your mom with that mouth, people? Uh, sometimes that gets me a little down. Ugh, I just, so I mostly don't read comments, at least not on the YouTube channels, because there's too many trolls out there. Right. You're talking to the devil. Uh, a lot of the right wing Christians um, are very against what I do. And uh, one of my mediums actually got kicked out of her Catholic church because I found out she was a medium. And I thought, do you think Jesus would approve of this, these exclusionary tactics? Some people actually say Jesus was a medium. So I thought that was really ironic and sad. Mm hmm. Yes. She was such an active member for a year, decades. Mm -hmm. So you do your part, the mediums do their part, and Eric does his part. Right. So, so it's like a, a, the perfect trifecta uh, along with the Internet. But any, anyone, anyone's son or daughter or loved one can do exactly what Eric's doing. I mean, he's not – special in a way so why but are the they not doing so why is it well, not? Good, good. i'm sure there's some people out there that do but uh you know eric it's a mission of his and he feels very compassionate uh, very passionate about it and um the one thing that makes eric a little different from a lot of these spirit gurus is spiritual guides is um he has this human quality about him he's very casual blunt he especially early on, uh, used a lot of sailor talk. And that made him more approachable in a way. Uh, so he's, he's not one of those guides who would start out with, welcome, my dear one. So he just feels like he's one of us, basically. So, so who did you have to be 
well, who, who did he want you to be or how were you chosen that you would be the car because the carrier because I mean he might maybe he would have found his own medium but well I mean he has actually worked outside of me through different mediums too okay I mean, people I don't even know at all so he spreads his little rascalness all over the world through different people and that's fine as long as they're really channeling him and being respectful respectful of uh, me and him that I'm fine with that okay and when you say respectful of you what do you mean oh uh, you know no making fun of what we do and okay. and so on you know okay. like this one medium on a YouTube channel uh, said that um, she's trying to help Eric that he's in purgatory and things like that it's like mm -mm. you know better I know better you know better yeah that's her ego her, her religious filters coming in basically but you are a a chat you are your own channel you channeled you heard that this was necessary and this had to be done so you I don't, know how, I don't know how I fell into it really I think uh -huh. If, if Christina had not created the actual blog, I mean, designed the, the website, I don't know if I would have done it or not. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. um, I hear you. you know, it, it's uh, It could have just been a happy accident. I, I, I'm not sure. So you said you, you need the science behind it. So now do, just give us a general statement of the spiritual, of the science behind the spirituality, or how you, how you refer to that. Gosh, there's so much to say. I guess the main two points are, you know, the law of thermodynamics, one of the laws of thermodynamics, I think is the second one, is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So we have existed forever and we will never die because we are energy. Our bodies might decay and die, but even that is, it's a recycled sort of energy. And, uh, and the other thing is that everything is energy. Even thoughts and emotions. Eric taught another thing that's kind of important. It doesn't have to do with science, really, but I think it's really important to get in here. One of the things he says so often is that we are emotional beings. We are emotions. We are that energy called emotion. Love is the main emotion. And um, we are supposed to feel first and then think, then have a thought, and then uh, make a decision based on that thought, right? So feel first, think second, is his motto. But most of us don't do that. Most of us have a thought first, and then that evokes some sort of emotion, and that emotion is what creates a choice. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's why they say lead with the heart. There right. we go. There yeah, we go. Yep. You sure don't want the head out there by itself because the head wants logic. This is not logical. You know, this takes science into a non, this takes science into how science gets created because you don't have, you don't necessarily have, have, um, logic to build, to, to, to have, to get to science. Well, wow, that's really interesting as you say that because it, it brought up a thought in my mind that logic, it depends on the facts that we have or have gathered and there are facts that we haven't gathered yet that make it seem illogical but you know once we have those facts then it probably won't be yeah. illogical anymore but we have to get there yeah from our heart That's right true. otherwise we won't go there yeah right the head doesn't know from that stuff That's without true. the without the heart in that coherent state yes i would say so uh, I have plenty of more questions, but I'm hoping that somebody else would like to call in and chat too and ask some questions. So please feel free if you've had a loss or just curious, you know, just, just want to know, just call in 919-518-9773. Yeah, we don't bite. Come on, people. Yeah, heck yeah. We sure don't bite. And no. computers, 2K voice, and also in our chat. And I want to remind all of you on Facebook, please feel free. To join us on our chat, just come to our website at nissancommunications.com. So, and if we, if we do buy, Marilyn and I have been caught up on all our shots, so we're good. Yes, it, that sounds right? like that sounds good to me. You <laughs> just have to trust. Yes. So, um, just anyway, tell tell everybody just about your books and the blog and the show because it's important. 
Uh, well, we have the show every um, uh, Monday at 7 p.m. Central Time, less an hour. Uh, again, the first 20 minutes, Eric talks a little bit, or sometimes we'll have a special uh, guest on. Like tonight, we're having Jamin Olivencia, a, a spiritual life coach, on. He's awesome, and he's helping Eric's little brother, by the way. And, uh, you know, then Eric takes questions from callers. You call in and ask any kind of questions. You can connect with your deceased loved one. It's totally free, you know. Oh, also, we have the, an Ask Eric magazine column on the Savannah blog and also on the uh, Sedona Journal so that you can submit questions when I call for them on the blog and Eric will answer them. And then we have uh, the YouTube channel, Ch Channeling Eric. Uh, some of them, uh, we just channel Eric. Others are uh, celebrities. Uh, we even have one where we've channeled Jesus. And on that, you can hear Jesus say yes when I ask him if he's incarnated on the uh, – so I had that one also uh, analyzed by a sound professional. He said, yep, not a human voice. So if you want to hear Jesus, one of the few in the last over 2,000 years, then you might want to check that out. We also have, uh, I think it's called Voices of the Dead, the, the uh, clip uh, that the, uh, the, the uh, sound uh, professional analyzed because he you know, makes it normal speed and has speed and, and, and so on. And, uh, and then the blog where I post almost every day. I've stopped doing Saturdays because I kind of need a break around Christmas. But, uh, you know, we – we cover just about anything, and I recommend that you start from the very beginning and just make your way through the archives because there's a lot of important stuff that Eric shares with us. And um, yeah, cool. Oh, and the books. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, the books. Uh, well, I've written parenting books because uh, when you have five kids, it's a very humbling experience. I thought, ah, people need to learn from my mistakes. And uh, but the the books I wrote after Eric died, the first was my son in the afterlife, um, uh, you know, uh, conversations from the other side, and that is my journey from skepticism to belief. But it also covers big concepts like what is time, what is God, what is love, uh, what is what's the afterlife like, etc. And then the other one I already described, uh, my life after death, a memoir from heaven. And are you working on another book? I don't know if I have another one in me. It's exhausting and it's very emotionally trying. For example, trans you know, transcribing the sessions um, when Eric talked about his actual death, um, it was very graphic and uh, very upsetting to me. And it's things that I really didn't know and kind of didn't want to know. So I almost quit writing the book at, at that point. So sometimes it's just a, a little hard. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. So here's another question for you. Does everything that you're talking about or a lot of what you're talking about apply to animals? Oh, yeah. Oh, animals are uh, life forms, energy. They have souls. They have soul contracts very often. Sometimes their soul contract is to be eaten. And the interesting thing is a lot of people say, well, isn't it better to be a vegetarian? Eric says, no, that a life, uh, the, the, the soul of a, of a plant is just as valuable as a soul of an animal. And a soul of an animal is just as valuable as the soul of a human being. So, and in, in the book, one thing he describes is the death of insects, what it looks like. Uh, they have this special portal that insects come through, like billions of mosquitoes and, and such. And a lot of the spirits like to hang out there and watch because it's like a fireworks display. You see all these little sparkling life forms just coming through this portal. So that's the kind of thing you would learn from from this book. It's kind of cool. So it's you know it's interesting because there there are questions you don't know to ask that's until true. you know the inf until you hear the information. I mean that's I, the way it, it's worked that way with me a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's interesting. So if you're an open soul which we all are on some level, but if you're open to reading, listening, slash everything, then you want to take a look at these books and books that will help you know what questions to ask. Because yes. once you hear the right information, you know it. Yeah, you're right. You know, that's true. You know how an absolute truth feels. I mean, it rings yes. true in your soul. You could kind of feel it in your solar plexus area. Like, wow, that's the truth. You know, and it's interesting, you know, you talk about everything having a soul. <clears throat> and my, the house that we just left, I didn't love the way the house was, 
but I d- was I didn't want to talk against it either. So I was caught because call me crazy, but I feel like it's got an energy that it ha- it's a living sure. organism. And I didn't want to say anything about it. I didn't want to like my rented townhouse better than my house. Because I thought that wasn't right, huh? Yeah, there's sometimes leftover energy from previous owners. Or when somebody has a a fight in the living room, that energy can sort of stay there. So you have to like... uh, um, Swish it. Yes, uh, smudge it with sage. Um, There are all sorts of things you can do. Uh, Jamie Butler taught me that you can get a bowl of salt and put rubbing alcohol in it and light it uh, until it burns out. And at first I did that in Eric's room where everything happened. There was like brown left over. Oh my. It's, it was really weird. So I dumped that, did it again, a little bit less brown, dumped that, did it again, and no brown. It's almost like it just chewed up all the negative energy. So are you still in that same house? Oh, yeah. And how do you feel in there? I don't like to go to his room. Still? I just don't. No. Nah. And I don't like to go up the set of stairs. It has stairs on one side, stairs on the other side. Um, I don't like to go up the stairs from the front door where I came rushing up to, to see how he was. I, I can't do that. I have to go all the way around to the other, you know. Even the, even with all my beliefs. I mean, that was, it was really traumatic. It was a really traumatic uh, day. Mm-hmm. You did you find him? Yeah. Uh, wow. Mm. So you have an incredible connection with him. Oh yeah. Oh, we always have. I always have had a really close connection to him. He could talk to me about anything. That kid. I mean, he would talk to, ask me about sex and all sorts of stuff. Huh? What was when his birth? Kid. What was his birth like? Uh, easy. Easy. Regular, three o'clock, uh, he was very alert, peed on the doctor, but other than that, it's fine. Mm-hmm. And he was a very easy child. Mm-hmm. Very easy. Mm-hmm. Interesting. There's so much uh, to question, to learn, to communicate, you know. I mean, this is how we're growing, you know, these oh, through these kinds of conversations. And I like to say we're keeping these conversations alive. It's true. You know, we don't know what we don't know. So once again, you are welcome to call in 919-518-9773 or check in with us on Skype, which will be Skype Voice at Computers 2K Voice. And you can also still have time to come in our chat. Just put your name near our video and you can come in there and share with us in there. So what are some of the most recent things that um, Eric is saying in some of the conversations that you've been privy to be a part of uh well you know lately we've been talking a lot about bullying um about animal abuse uh, we interviewed hugh hefner and uh howard hughes john denver um you mean De- you've interviewed them through him yes he brings them he brings a lot of them. mediums cannot interview uh, um uh celebrities for some reason, Eric facilitates that. So I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's a, the medium, the ego gets in the way because, oh, why would John Denver want to talk to, through me, et cetera. So, but to, Eric seems to facilitate that communication. And so what have they told you? Well, you know, we try to keep it non-voyeuristic. So, you know, I ask things like, what was your spiritual mission? Uh, tell me about a, um, a, a life that you had that most influenced your life as whoever, John Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what, what did you learn? What were you here to learn or teach? Um, so did anybody you know, say anything so unique, whether it was Howard Hughes or Hugh Hefner or John Denver, that was like, you know, like John Denver-ish or Howard Hughes-ish? Oh, God, it's just amazing. Like Madame Curie. We, I always ask... Tell us something that nobody really knew about uh, about you, and it was that she had a little teddy bear that she sewed to the inside of her skirt, or attached somehow to the inside of her skirt. She always had it with her. 
little fun things like that. And we, we interviewed uh, Madeline McCon, I think it was, the little girl that went missing. Oh. That uh, Years ago. Years ago. Yeah. And um, she described exactly the area north of this and X number of kilometers from here, et cetera. And it's a lake with a finger-like projections near a harbor and so on. And so I looked on Google Maps and yeah, there's right around there, there's a lake with finger-like projections. Do you, what so, did, uh, do you ask well, like, like uh, what's her name? What was her name? The one, uh, John Benet. Would you ask somebody like that how they, pay, oh, yeah. who, who, how they right. died? Yeah. I, so do you know? Yes. The mother hired a hitman. Why? Because, because she kept on complaining. You know, that was yeah. her golden child that she got accolades for. The mom felt um, all the glory from her. And so when she wanted to just be a little kid again and didn't want to do it and started whining about it, um, she uh, put a hit on her. Wow. Yeah. Now, do, with that information, what do you do with it? Uh, you know, like with, with, uh, Matt, little Maddie, I did send that information to Scotland Yard. So I haven't been contacted about it, but, uh, with the Google map images and, and so on. So maybe, maybe they're looking into that area. I don't know. Um, yeah. Wow. This gets juicier and juicier. Anyway, uh, but before, um, I ask my final breaking free question of the day, I just want to remind all of you that I have a book on Amazon, which is listening in, you know, uh, in just one afternoon, listening to the hearts of men. And I'm getting ready to publish my next one, which is more extraordinary than I even imagined, which is in just one afternoon, listening to the hearts of twins. So there's going to be a lot more of those coming and just understanding people is so important. So if you're curious, if you're a man curious about men and yourself and want some perspective, or you're a woman curious about men and want some perspective, uh, go find my book on Amazon. You'll find it as an ebook and you'll find it as a paperback book. And we are also um, welcoming opportunities for those of you out here who would like to advertise, sponsor the Breaking Free Show and other shows on Nissan Communication. We'd love to talk to you about it. We have some wonderful rates and it gets you handheld messages and all globally, um, wherever you want, you know, in the world, we certainly have a wide reach and our arms and branches go wide and deep with love. So please contact me at Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com. It can be a product, a service, doesn't matter, a message of whatever you like. And we can go from there. So, Alyssa, words of any other words of wisdom or anything you want to leave with us today? Again, I think the most important thing is relationships don't have to die just because the person's body dies. But I want to share a real quick uh, technique that you can use to communicate for yes and no questions with your loved one. It's called the hand game. Eric, talk to me. You hold out your hands and you designate one as no and one as yes. And then you ask your loved one a question like, um, are you here right now? And you will feel a different sensation on one of his hands. I'm sure they're not going to say no. because, But you, you'll feel like a change in temperature, a tingling. Sometimes it feels like somebody's blowing on, on the palm of your hand. If you don't feel anything for a while, some spirits have a harder time than others. So you might have to say, come on, make it stronger. Make it stronger and encourage them. So that's kind of fun. That and is talk great. To them. Just talk to them. That's great. And talk to them. Yeah, so, talk to them. Right, talk to them. I have to remember to do that, especially with my dad. I forget to talk. I just, I know he's with me, but I don't talk to him and I don't pay attention all the time. To, I just make the assumption, whereas sometimes I would just like to feel it. Yes. Right? So when right. you do it, get ahead. What are we going to say? Right. No, I just right, I yeah. agree with you. Yeah, and when you're doing this kind of hand thing, you're feeling the vibration of the energy, I guess, right? Exactly. So that's very cool. So yeah. everybody out here, I do hope you enjoyed our show today and that you gained tremendous insight. Alyssa, you're wonderful in explaining all this. You're a perfect guest. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank Please tell you. that to my kids. They know all my quirks and flaws. I'm going to tell them you're a perfect guest. All right. 
you. My I pleasure. My pleasure. We look forward to seeing you again and everybody out here. Thank you so much for being with us today. We love you all. Happy holiday. We'll see you soon. Bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.